heating, ventilation, air conditioning is HVAC. And they are going to do, they've got a paper that they've prepared in a presentation, and they are going to demonstrate for us, present to us, with us, for us. And I'll turn it over to the team. Hey, I'm uh, Trevor Hawkinson. I'm Alice Bessie. Jeff Perrins. Randy Carlson. Joshua Houston. Cody Lane. And I'm Mr. Roberts. And we are Make HVAC Great Again. Um, and we'd like to start off by taking a call from Mariah. What we're going to do today is talk to you about an HVAC analysis of a home air conditioning system. Um, Josh here actually bought a new unit, um, and so we decided to analyze his unit. Why we need to do this project? Well, first off, it was our term project, but more importantly, Josh wanted to analyze, um, he wanted to rationalize buying a new and bigger unit. So he had an old unit, and it wasn't quite working as well as he wanted. So instead of just buying a new unit that was the same size, he bought one size bigger in hopes of making it cooler in his house and more efficient. That's the first thing we wanted to look at is, was buying the new and bigger unit reasonable? The second thing we wanted to look at were his ducts in his house. So the problem could have not been in the AC unit itself, but in the ducts in his house. So we're going to talk to you a little bit, we're going to explain some of this and then talk to you about the analysis we did to determine these two things. To understand how we did the analysis for the HVAC system, you need to know some basic thermodynamic principles. Um, the first is enthalpy. Um, enthalpy is a measure of energy related to the heat content of a fluid. Fluid being the air or the refrigerator. So it's heat energy in essence. It's the same as kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is your energy related to velocity, right? Potential energy being energy related to gravitational. Right, potential to fall. Enthalpy is the energy related to heat, and that's what HVAC systems deal with. The next thing to understand is that heat energy is always transferred from high to low. If you set a cold cup of water out, it's not going to cool the room, per se, but the room is going to heat the water up. Okay. Another important concept is the saturation <coughs> curve. Um, this is a temperature and entropy diagram. Don't worry about the entropy part. Um, but this curve here represents a change in state. So when you boil water, for instance, you put water in, in, the, in the cup, put it on the stove, and it's a compressed liquid. It's all liquid. Once it starts to boil, you enter this mixture phase where it has both steam and liquid. So you have a vapor and a gas and a liquid. <coughs> As you add more and more energy to it, it eventually becomes all the gas. That's when you have just pure gas. This is the reference frame that an AC unit works in. So your AC unit takes energy from the air in your house and transfers it to a refrigerant in the AC unit, and then that refrigerant transfers energy out. And we'll talk to you more about that. So your air conditioning unit operates the same way that the refrigerator in your kitchen operates. Uh, both have the objective of removing heat from a low temperature space and rejecting it to a space with high temperature. So in the case of an AC, it's taking heat from your home and rejecting it outside. Um, shown is the ideal refrigeration cycle. And these are the four components we're going to go into detail in those next. But it operates with a compressor. That goes to the outdoor coil, which is the condenser. Then to an expansion valve. And next to the evaporator inside your home. Can you go back, please? Okay. The compressor is the first part of the air conditioning system, and um, the main purpose of the compressor, compressor is to take energy from a different source, electrical energy, and convert it to a type of energy that can be transformed into cooling energy. So what it does is it takes the uh, refrigerant and pumps it up to a high pressure and temperature. It increases the temperature of it, and then from that, it can be um, moved to different parts of the system. <coughs> to uh, eventually make cold <coughs> there. But uh, it's also important to realize that the compressor puts a flow into the system. So it always, it, so all the fluid goes through all the different components of the air conditioning system. Next we have the condenser. The condenser, like the compressor, is located in your outside unit. And uh, the condenser is actually, <laughs> all these coil, it's lined with coils on your uh, outside unit. And this, these coils are filled with uh, a hot fluid. And the fan up top is going to induce
induce blow over these coils, and it's actually going to heat up the air and project it to the outside atmosphere. Um, this then cools down your fluid, and it's going to push it to the um, throttling valve. Next is the throttling valve. It takes the fluid from the condenser that he just explained, and it runs it through a uh, like a hole, essentially. It reduces the pressure and the temperature, but it increases the velocity. So you think you have like a water hose and you put your thumb on it, it speeds up, but pressure drops and temperature drops. Um, this, it's easy to see how it works. It's in this picture over here. The red in, like indicates a hot fluid, the hot refrigerant coming in, and a cold fluid coming out of the expansion valve. The expansion valve also has a, like a piston in it where it regulates how much fluid comes out because the next component, it regulates so it doesn't um, like freeze up. It doesn't get too cold to where it just doesn't function. Next is the evaporator. So the, evap the evaporator is located on the indoor unit. And it's also known as an A coil because of the shape of an A. And in this part, warm humid air goes over the, the coils that are filled with the, the cool refrigerant. And in this in this part, the, the warm humid air is dehumidified and cooled and then pushed out into the ducts. So some of the standards we applied to our project to measure the performance and the data that we collected came from ASHRAE, which is the American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers. Um, one of the standards we used was number 55-2013, and this standard sets uh, a standard for the indoor air temperature of your home, and it says that the comfortable temperature of a home should be 67 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And we did the same to apply to humidity, which we used 62.1-2013, and this states that the humidity relative humidity of your home should be 65 percent or less. Next we wanted to evaluate some kind of performance about the system. So uh, in thermodynamics you want to calculate the coefficient of performance, which is found by uh, taking your energy out and dividing it by the energy you have to put into the system. So for refrigeration you want to calculate the in would be the electrical work done by the compressor to make the system flow. And your energy out is the heat removed from the system. And um, with that, you get your coefficient of performance. And you can also calculate this to your seasonal energy efficiency ratio, which you'll find on the outside box of an AC unit when you purchase it. On this one, this is the schematics of the house that we are actually looking at. As you can see, the garage is over here. We have the front door, living room, which goes into the dining area, kitchen, master bedroom, walk-in calls in the bathroom. As you notice on these CAD drawings, we've indicated where every window is and these dark red lines around the edge for the first floor and the second floor of the house. And then we've also indicated where the ducts were, these blue dashed lines. And then we've also indicated where the trunk lines for the duct work is. And the air handler sits upstairs in a closet. The thermostat is right here next to the air handler. And then these circles that you're seeing is where we put each one of our hobo sensors which is sensors that we use to collect data. We have one outside, one right here by the sink and the dishwasher, one on the south facing wall downstairs, one upstairs, and then one right next to the thermostat. We then uh, we looked at some of the data and got some values to see if the air conditioning size uh, increase was sufficient or if I went way overboard with the new AC. The air conditioner that I bought, it was a Goodman air handler. It was a five ton inside, capable of a uh, 2600 CFM air movement over those eight coils that they had mentioned. And the outdoor condenser was a four ton condensing unit with a two speed compressor. It's capable of removing 45,500 45, BTUs per hour. And then down here, we listed all the vent size for every room, uh, upstairs and downstairs. Okay, so these are some pictures of some of the different types of um, sensors that we use to collect the data we needed for the, um, to do the analysis. The first one is the Hobo Data Logger, which is actually a, um, it measures the relative humidity and the temperature in, at different places throughout the room, or in the house. And then um, it, we use it to see what the temperature is and stuff in the room is doing to know if it needs to go up or down or if it is um, in the comfort zone or not. The next
next one is a uh, anometer, which uh, measures the velocity of the air flowing through the ducts. We use that to determine if the duct sizes were proper, were the proper size or not. And then the next is the Still Piece Smartman 360, which is a digital uh, manifold gauge, and we use that to find the temperatures and pressures inside the um, actual AC unit. For our time frame on the data collection, we had the hobo sensors over a period of about three days. But as you can see, I've marked 70 degrees Fahrenheit right here, and the day we got them, a cold front came in, and the temperatures dropped down to 52 degrees. So we weren't able to collect any data in these areas because the AC wasn't running, the heater was running. So the only area that we were able to look at is this time span right here where it actually went up to about 76 degrees. So the time span that we actually are showing data on is from 1.08 p.m. to 5.08 p.m., which is a four-hour window right here in this area. Some of the assumptions that we had to make when we were analyzing the data was we have to assume <coughs> constant pressure across the condenser and the evaporator. We also have to assume constant enthalpy across the throttling valve, which can be, can be seen in the graph. So we then took all of our data and we plotted this data on the right hand side here um, in a TS diagram, which I'll explain, and then we compared it to the ideal cycle. Um, so the TS diagram uh, can also represent a TH diagram, and they're very closely related. Um, so this really represents the amount of enthalpy, like I mentioned earlier, involved at each state, and these lines are the processes. So for instance, here you'd be going up your compressor and then across your condenser down your throttling valve, and then through your evaporation. On the left, you see the ideal cycle. We see here on the ideal cycle that we got to a completely saturated liquid, so it's, it's fully liquid at this point. However, on our analysis, we never quite got there. We still had a good amount of vapor present in our system. So that was one big difference between our, our cycle and the ideal cycle that we assumed it to be when we analyzed it. The other difference is um, these lines are straight up and down here, um, constant enthalpy lines that we measured, whereas here they shouldn't quite be. Things like that. We're slightly different. Okay. This is a zoomed in area of the data from the Hobo sensor uh, placed outside the house. This one we just had to compare to the temperature inside the house to figure out what's going on. The top line is the temperature as it changes, and then the bottom one is the relative humidity. You can see the temperature increased a little bit, almost up to 75 degrees, and then it started decreasing. So the thermostat is what regulates the temperature within your house. Um, this is where the unit measures the temperature of the air inside your house. And this is data from the Hobo logger that was placed at the thermostat. And as you can see, there's not much fluctuation. It kept the temperature plus or minus one degree plus or minus half a degree, and also the relative humidity. And from this data, we were able to calculate the runtime for the unit. So from the peak of, from the peak to the valley is when the temperature is dropping, so the AC is on, it's about eight minutes. And then from the valley to another peak is when the temperature is rising, so the AC is off. So that took about 20, three minutes. So from that, you can calculate that the unit is running about 25% of the day. So this is the uh, data log from the, the uh, dining room. And as uh, Josh explained earlier, the, the dining room was not just a single bedroom. It consisted of the living room, which had a large ceiling fan, the dining room with the chandelier, and then the kitchen with all the kitchen appliances all open in one room. Um, you'll see that the temperature stays between, you know, plus or minus half a degree. So it stays fairly constant. But uh, you notice that the uh, humidity looks kind of skewed and bouncing around a lot. This is due to like the, the sensor being close to the dishwasher, which puts off humidity when it heats up and cools your uh, like cleans your dishes. The fan's always moving air, so the humidity is always moving, and you don't have just stale air. And uh, and since it's such a large room, the the spikes in humidity, even though it looks like a lot, is only one percent relatively. For bedroom number one, we saw a 2% skew in our temperature and our humidity. 
we believe, well, we know that um, the temperature gauge was placed on a south-facing wall, so it's experiencing a lot of heat. So the heat from the um, south-facing wall from the sun, it's conducting through the, the walls, and it's, it's creating this temperature change. So we would have placed it on different walls uh, if we had more time to do it. And then we also see huge uh, humidity changes. It, it's going to dip and uh, go back up very swiftly. This is because this is the first duct outside of the air handler. So the evaporator is getting all this water, and then it's blowing it right back into that room. So it's going to take the uh, humidity down and then just give it right back. So the master bedroom is the furthest away from bedroom number one. So it behaves the exact opposite with the humidity. But it's also, the hobo monitor is also placed on a south facing wall as well. And so that's why you see an increase in temperature. In conclusion, the two problems that we located were the master bedroom temperature increasing, which you can see here. And then also we noticed the uh, air intake, whenever it would cut on, was really loud. So we did some investigating on that one too, and we also found that we had a restricted airflow in our intake filter. Our intake filter for the CFM, or the cubic feet per minute that we were moving, which was 2164, we should have had about 1,082 square inches of filter. We only had 400. So we were less than half of what it should be. Um, our recommendation is to add an addition of another 25 by 16 return air filter grill to the first floor, directly below the unit in the hallway. And then also to add a 10 inch flex line, which this is a picture of what it looks like here, with a supply duct in the master bedroom to help push some more of that cool air over there and help regulate the, the temperature in there. And then we also suggested putting a dampening um, valve on there to be able to adjust the airflow throughout the season. And then to help regulate the humidity in that downstairs master bedroom, because it dipped so much compared to the rest of the house, we wanted to put a return air duct down there. So we did an addition of a 12 inch flexible return air duct with another 12 by 12 filter grill down there. And hopefully this will solve the problems that we discovered whenever we were doing our analysis. So that's the summary of our project and the conclusion of our presentation. So we covered the refrigeration and HVAC systems, the need for our project, the analysis that we conducted, and the data that we collected. Are there any questions? You may have covered this. All right. Mr. How low did the humidity get in that one room? In which room? In the master bedroom? Yeah. Um, it got down to 44% relative humidity when compared to the rest of the house, which maintained around an average of 53 or 54 got really low compared to the rest of the house. Okay. Still a nice livable area, just not... Yeah.